You were expecting a white hat? <laughs> well, hello, Crime Stoppers. Oh, my goodness. Oh, war with Syria. I'm happy. Uh, I voted for this lady named Tulsi Gabbard. Tul Tulsi Gabbard. She, uh, she opposes the war. Uh, she happens to be my congressperson. See, that's the kind of person you vote for, right? Voting for people like Obama twice. Never voted for that guy. People are like, oh, you just don't want to admit you vote. No, it was very clear. I mean, they made me change my shirt when I walked in in 2008 the first time. Anyway, uh, and I wrote in Ron Paul at that election. And then the last one, I actually did vote uh, for a candidate. Because why not give the third party, one of the third party guys. I didn't vote for what's his nuts in the, uh, in the Libertarian Party, though. Because he'd be all about, yeah, we've got this military. Let's go to Syria and use it to... Humanitarian though. <sighs> it's not about humanitarian anything in Libya or Syria or any of these damn countries. It's all about dollar hegemony. It's not about oil. It's not about terrorism. It's not about any of this. It's about the central bankers. And people are waking up to this fact that it's not just crazy conspiracy theory. It's actually about the FRN and our bankers. And then the corporations that the bankers set up. The right then our, our founding fathers warned us about this. More dangerous to us than standing armies are these bankers and their corporations. What corporations am I talking about? Am I talking about Apple Computer? Am I talking about, you know, companies that make cardboard? No, I'm talking about the bankers' companies, oil companies, the military industrial complex, the medical industrial complex, the spying complex, which is part of the military industrial complex, that these bankers set up. And they try to scare you with the spying. With this whole Syria thing, Snowden, Edward Snowden, any story about Edward Snowden, Benghazi, IRS, any of that stuff? Ah, fake scandals. Or a fake president. Uh, let's see. So, 14 principled anti-war celebrities that we fear may have been kidnapped. This is a great article. Sheryl Crow, number one. I love Sheryl Crow. I love her. I mean, she's just that horsey-faced, guitar-playing, fun-loving girl. All I want to do is have some fun. I, just, I, love, I love everything about Sheryl Crow, except for the fact that she's silent as fuck about Obama committing crimes <laughs> and war crimes in the Middle East. Um... Gee, war is not the answer, her t-shirt says. And yet, when uh, it comes time to speak up about war and Syria, silent, si crickets, nothing. Uh, Bruce Springsteen, really Bruce, can't say anything, can't make up a song, can't sing a protest song about war. Nope, hell no, you can't. You'd, you, you'd be afraid you'd get banned because, you know, the bankers own the music industry too. Martin Sheen, I love Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen said, you don't pay a woman to have sex with you. You pay a woman to leave after she has sex with you. That's a Martin Sheen quote. Uh, he can't say dick about Obama, though. Uh, Ed Asner. Ed Asner. This is great. We'll talk about Ed Asner in a minute. Ed Asner, also silent as fuck about the war. Um, how about Sean Penn? Really, Sean? Sean, you pugnacious bastard. What? What? You can't say anything about Obama because he's black and because he's a Democrat? You can only say shit about George Bush? Is that it? That goes for the rest of you, too. Um, where is Chris Rock in all this, by the way? Where, where, the, where the hell is Chris Rock is, is what I want to know. Where, where are all the black artists? Well, actually, a lot of black artists have come out and said, yeah, we, this is bad. Um, uh, Tim Robbins, very, very disappointed in you, Tim. Very, no, not a word, not a peep, not a press release, not a anything, not a, not a video on YouTube about all the artists against the war. You fuckers came out against, you know, for gun control. Hey, let's disarm the populace and make sure only the bad guys have guns. That will protect the good guys because that's our logic and reasoning and the critical thinking skills that we've been taught uh, by the government. Let's see, George Clinton. <sighs> Fuck George Clinton. We don't even talk about him. Jackson Brown. Really? So you can't, uh, you can't make a song there? Jackson Brown can't make a song, a protest song, war. What's it good for? Any kind of lyric like that. Maybe war bad. Maybe Obama making war is bad. No, no. Uh, Janine, Janine Garofalo uh, actually makes me laugh. I enjoy her stand-up, and she's a completely hypocritical fuck because when it comes to Obama, she won't say shit, right? Because he black, and he a Democrat, and, you know, when Obama does war, it's for good intentions and what, right? We kill children in Syria because they're killing children in Syria. We call it collateral damage, though. And speaking of that, um, when we're bombing Syria, what do we use? We use depleted uranium. Do we use all kinds? We've used chemical weapons all over the place. In Fallujah, we used... We didn't call it napalm, but we used stuff that was very similar to napalm. We also, it's very clear, we used phosphorus, white phosphorus. Um, let's see, in uh, Vietnam, were we spraying the fuck out of that place with Agent Orange? To this day, there are birth defects in that country because of the Agent Orange that our country sprayed there. 
I think we've lost the moral high ground, guys. I think that the time for us telling other countries how they can and what to... It, anyway, Neil Young. Really, Neil? There's another one. Seems to me you could put a song together, maybe, perhaps, one. One song. Just one. I don't want a fucking album. Just one song on one album. Nah. Fuck that. Uh, Jessica Lange. What, is, what are all these people have in common, by the way, that I've talked about so far? They're all white, and they all want to pretend like they're liberal and progressive, and they voted for the black guy, and now they don't want to say shit when the black guy turns out to be exactly like all the other white guys that came before him. Warmongering fuck. Simple as that. Uh, Barbara Streisand. Mm, nothing. Danny Glover. There's Danny. Uh, Danny Glover. <laughs> Susan Sarandon, another one, very disappointed in Susan Sarandon. It seems that you'd lift your voice up. But no, she wants, she, apparently she values money over, you know, whatever the hell it is, uh, morals and the ability to, you know, speak out against when it's wrong. You know it's wrong. Now, see, Telsey Gabbard is a person from Hawaii that I talked about a couple of times in these videos. And uh, she's now our congressperson, and she's come out against the war. That's why I voted for her. So you vote for those guys. You don't vote for guys like Obama. Simple. If you vote for somebody who perpetrates lies and war, you are basically saying you approve of lies and war. You cannot tell me different. You can sit there all day long and talk about how you're pro-peace. And that's one thing. You want to be pro-peace. Lift up your mind. Pro-peace, not anti-war. Because if you're anti-war, you're going to get more war. But if you're pro-peace, you'll get more peace. So what we want to do is be pro-peace. We want to be, we want peace in Syria. We want peace. We don't want more war. We don't want to be against war. We want to be pro-peace. Very simple. Now, uh, Chris Rock. Where's Chris Rock? I don't see him on this list. Where's all these other guys that were making noise about Bush and making fun of Bush and calling Bush a war criminal and calling Bush all kinds of names, which he was. Don't make me, don't get me wrong. I'm no Bush supporter. I'm just saying, where the fuck are these guys now when it comes to saying stuff about Obama and stopping this war? and making sure that the rest of the world understands that 90% of the United States, right down to our movie stars who are silent and ridiculous and scared and hypocrites and just sorry excuses for humans who have too damn much money and not enough, you know, moral gumption to be able to even make a video like this and say, hey, we're against the war. But I can tell you, 90%, I don't know anybody, I don't know anybody, not anybody, not military guys that I know, nobody I know thinks that going to war in Syria is a good idea. And yet, they're going to debate about it and talk about it in Congress, and Obama's saying that he'll do it on his own, blah, 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 blah. And yet the American people are saying, no, we don't want this. Our government has been hijacked by bankers. These bankers have enslaved the world, and oh, Hungary, Hungary says, get out, and they kick out the IMF, and they're printing debt-free currency, and you don't hear dick about that in the United States. Same thing, you didn't hear anything about Iceland either, right? Jailing the bankers and, and putting their government in jail and over basically throwing it down and saying, no, we don't owe this debt, and we're not paying, and that. didn't hear anything about that, because what if the Americans got that idea in their head? What if the Americans were like hungry and said that there was debt-free currency from here on out? We're not paying you to, to print our money for us, and we're not letting you loan it to us anymore. What then? Oh, my God. In fact, I expect Hungary to be accused of war crimes anytime soon. They'll be telling them that, telling us that they, they're killing Jews or Muslims or somebody. They're killing some minority in Hungary uh, using gas, and, and we better go in there <laughs> because they're printing debt-free money in Hungary. Uh, it won't be long. They'll make up some story. Anyhow, Syria, no, right? And go call your congressmen, go call your whoever it is, your senators and congressmen, and let them know that you are not for the war. You need to make noise. We let the, let the world know. It's like it's like Horton hears a who. You need to make enough noise where everybody understands that no, this is a bad idea. On top of that, many people understand that Hawaii is ground zero, and if this were, go to, were to go to uh, a very hot state of affairs where Russia and China are, are, why wouldn't they, I mean, it's out in the middle of the Pacific, why wouldn't they drop a nuke on Pearl? Just get rid of it, no longer an issue, right? You guys better think twice about, you know, even, even getting close to where, this is at least as big as the Cuban Missile Crisis, because the Russians and Chinese and the Iranians have all said, 
you're not going to have another Libya. You're not going to, it's, this is not going to be a cakewalk. Like we're not, that we're drawing the line here. And the Russians have made it very, very clear. Now, when it comes to them guys against us guys, we spend more than all of them combined. So if it came down to a very hot shooting match, I still put my money on the United States, believe it or not. However, the victory would be Farrakh. Because by the time it's all over, who's going to be left? And you know what? The wealthy don't care. That 1%, they don't care. They don't care about it. And it's obvious. We've been this high before. There are people finally taking a look at you know some of the uh, archaeological sites in India where it's very obvious that, you know, if you just read the Vedas, it's very obvious we've been to this place before. And we're going to just about to repeat it again. And it takes all of us to lift up our consciousness and lift up our minds to understand that war is not the answer. This is the old paradigm. The new paradigm and war is the absolute last resort. Last, 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 last thing. And see, what you, in Hawaii we have a saying, you got to keep the main thing the main thing. And that's the main thing. And so the main thing is the bankers. And understand, we know who these people are now. We know their names. We know the Rothschilds. We know Morgan and Sachs and who runs these corporations and who the CEOs are and who sits on the boards. We know who these people are. These are the corporations that own the oil companies, that own the military industrial complex, and we need to put an end to all of this. This is why people need to understand more mathematics and free energy and the fact that all it is has been suppressed. We have the technology to make oil irrelevant, but no. And then they keep the, the petrodollar alive. And again, the petrodollar is what this is about. It's about dollar hegemony. It's not about oil. It's not about liberty. It's not about terrorists. It's like, and and Al Qaeda, who started that? Who st it's not a civil war. We fomented that. Us, we, us. It was us funding them. We we armed them. We ever, we bought them in from other countries. And brought, it's not a civil war. Even that is them using language to make it sound like, no, it's an invasion from outside forces that are backed by other countries, Saudi Arabia, the United States, France, uh, Britain, uh, Israel, don't forget those guys. Those are the guys that are making a civil war over there and have made a humanitarian crisis. Millions and millions of people have been displaced in Syria. Meantime, you guys are watching football. It's football season. Now, it's time to understand we need to educate, 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 educate on sound money. What did they do in Hungary? What did they do in Iceland? What's going on? What the heck is this sound money thing? What is this gold and silver? What? Fully informed juries, right? To get this drug war ended. We need to fix so many things at home. We can't even believe that we'd even be thinking about going into Syria. Um, and I can't believe that all of our stars and all of these people are silent. I can't, well, actually, I can believe it, but it sickens me. And it should sicken you too. People talking about Miley Cyrus and all this other stuff. And then, you know, took Snowden off the center stage. NSA spying. There's there's so much more to do with NSA spying that you don't even know about or that maybe you should take a look into. Because, yeah, they're spying. And they want you afraid. They want you thinking that you need a hat and glasses to make a video like this. You can look. You click on the thing. You can see me in a hundred other videos where I'm not wearing a hat and glasses. I'm just fooling around. But the idea is they want you afraid. They want you to think that you have to be anonymous or they're going to come and take you away. Right? 300 million of us. And the, what gets the publicity? Oh, is when they come knocking on the door for that one guy that was up there saying things, naughty things about Obama or saying naughty things. But they'll come to your house. They're watching you. Everything you say. Watch what you see on the phone. Right? There's no way they can sift all that data. Now, if you're targeted... And, and, and now they say three degrees of separation. They can, if this is a terrorist, three degrees of phone list. And if you do the math, that's everybody. That's all of us, right? Six degrees of separation is the whole planet. In the United States, three degrees of separation is easily every 300 million of us and quite a few people overseas. The Germans were a little upset about being spied on. So were the Brazilians. Turns out uh, we, get it. we do a lot of spying here. And it doesn't stop anything because who's the perpetrator? of these false flag attacks. Now, use your critical thinking skills. We're coming up on midterm elections. I think the Democrats are going to get slaughtered. But the Republicans are no better. And when it's a Republican in the White House aching for war, the Republicans will be quiet about it. And then all these all these other people will be probably be a white guy, so it'll be okay for them to make noise, right? <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. Play you guys like a drum. I don't want to be considered a racist, so I think I'll vote for the black guy. Again, 
even though you know, even though you know he was as bad or worse than Bush. Ah, well, he's better than that Romney guy. Romney would get us to a war in Syria. <laughs> Dumbasses. Anyway, then Romney wouldn't have been any better. You're correct. So what do you do? Well, quit voting for these two parties. Quit voting. It's a pretend thing. It's a, they're pretending. Are you fooled? And why is it that guys like John Stewart and Colbert, the fools, are the only ones that are making sense? And what's this other guy's name? Uh, Russell Brand. Turns out, Russell's making some noise. Where are our guys? Where are our stars? Why isn't it that our whole nation is standing up going, look, we've been hijacked? Right? Never mind what Congress says. Congress is supposed to be our representative, but if everybody in every state was standing up going, look, no war. 90% of us, with every poll, every place you go, look around. There's a very, very few dumb people that would think that it would be, that are fooled into thinking that we need some kind of humanitarian war in Syria. So anyway, e pluribus unum, tell your friends, <laughs> explain to them about the bankers, explain to them about sound money, explain to them, you know, draw their attention to uh, Portugal when it comes to the drug war, and Iceland and Hungary when it comes to banking, and explain to them about fully informed juries, and explain to them that we have been hijacked by these usurping fucks that don't care about you or me or anything on the planet except money. They're sociopaths and psychopaths that you, most of you can't wrap your minds around to the point where when people like me tell you about them, you think we're conspiracy theorists. And that's what you've been trained to say. Call it conspiracy theory. Because there's no way that people would be lying like that. There's no way that they'd be dishonest like that. There's no way that they'd be greedy like that. You can't comprehend it because you're not liars. You're not greedy like that, right? This is why. And they understand this. They use it to their advantage. They understand that you don't, you can't comprehend the kind of sociopathic, pathological behavior that these fucks engage in on a daily basis when they're making decisions about their bottom line and corporate profits and banking. Now it's time to take it back, guys. And the only way we do that is with education. Pen mightier than sword, e pluribus unum. I think I've said enough. <laughs> I'll put some links down there. Enjoy your week. <laughs>